que ensino pá. Sa congressman. You've been dealing with them for three years. Through Mr. Loy, Finafalo Apian, in behalf of these NGOs, in behalf of these legislators. Sino pa? As mentioned earlier by Mr. Paniken, sir, by Madami kasi yan, it's quite confusing kung sino-sino who used this foundation, sir. Sino pa? Talaga madami yan. Sige. Sino pa? That's what we're here for. Mr. Habiliana. I have to look at the list, sir, and look at the foundation they're using. You have to check? Yes, sir. Okay. So next hearing, you can come up with a comprehensive report. Yes? Sir, I don't have the... Mr. Baniget will lend you all the documentary support that you want. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Baniget, please... Uh, Furnish him all the documentary support. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Haviliana, um, next hearing you will make a report yes. based on your memory, based on your on the documents that Mr. Badiget will show you. Yes, thank you. Who are the legislators and uh, Mr. Baniget, you will provide us with the documents. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, can I just ask for a document in connection with what you're Yes, asking? please, go ahead. For both um, implementing agencies, I don't believe the COA report that we received last week uh, broke down the, the total BIDAFs um, used in each implementing agency. The breakdown was by NGO. So I believe we can ask the implementing agencies to give us the totals that they receive from the PDAF and the NGO, the Napolis NGOs. Yes. We don't have those totals. So yes. like I have a 272 million that went through ZREC, but only through one NGO. So what about the others? Correct. Well taken. The bigger picture. Well taken. Again, um, um, Mr. Umali and Mr. Baniged, please zero in on the Napoles uh, NGOs and the legislators. Yes, Mr. Umali. Mr. Chair, we only have one agent in Napoles corporation. That passed through our corporation. Only one? Do you confirm that, uh, Asik Salako? Yes, sir. I mentioned that in the... Which, which one is this? Uh, SDPFFI, and it was Congressman Paltes. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's only 10 million. Yung, yung pangfi, yung pang, pang No, sir. Uh, as I reviewed the newspaper reports, it's not part of the uh, Napoles group. Can we have the slide on the all the NGOs, please? Wala isa lang dito. So, so po, yung SDP FFI na dinaan ni Congressman Valdez. Yun lang po ang dumaan sa ZREC. The other PDAF that went through ZREC are Port Pangkabuhayan Foundation, which is not in this lineup. Pangkabuhayan Foundation, Foundation Incorporated. Director Susan, kasama ba ito sa Napoles yung Pangkabuhayan Foundation na sinasabi ni? Hindi rin po namin nakita sa newspaper yun na part ng Napoles. Kaya 8 lang po yung aming report. Ah, at any rate, uh, when we have the whistleblowers here, then we can ask them to identify which exactly are the Napoles uh, uh, NGOs. Senator Bamakino. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, Director Susan, do you concur with um, 
with ZEREC that there was only one Napoles NGO uh, involved with uh, ZEREC from 2007 to 2009. My recollection last week was that there was more. No? Maybe you can clarify. Yes, sir. Based on our schedule, there is only one, the SDF PFFI. Thank you. Okay, thank you. At this point, I would like to yield to the other legislators who... Senator... Um, Mr. Chair, may I avail of my time because I yielded last week? Yes, Senator Pia, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, well, just to, just to continue on this issue, just to... Uh, be consistent with the report of COA. Under Pangkabuhayan, uh, ZREC has the amount of 272 million. So that is not part of the Napoles NGOs? Yes, ma'am. Based on the newspaper account, because we do not have, uh, we only base our our report on the newspaper na yun ang mga NGO. So this report that you showed us is not based on your audit? I, I'm, I'm reading. I'm reading from. This is a forward report from your website, ah, yes, and the amount mm -hmm. under Zerac is 272.5 million. So I'm just clarifying if this then does not if this this amount includes NGOs not part of the Napoles. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. Because our report, ma'am, is. I don't think that the Goa at this point can say which one is the police, which one is not. All that they're saying is that some, uh, some accounts have not been liquidated, some uh, NGOs appear to be fake, but I don't think that they are in a position, based on the report, to say which one is the police, which one is not. Just on their COA report. So that's why they keep on saying, based on the media reports. Senator Pia, please continue. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I direct my question both to COA and DBM, no? Um, in the report that was delivered by your chair last week, there were, um, there were mentions of the anomalies that were noted by COA. My first question is, would you know if the, the projects that were included in the report were part of the PDAF menu because from my experience it's extremely difficult to pass projects other than the usual schools, hospitals, medical assistance because the requirement of DBM is very strict. So I want to know how this happened and so, so I address my question to both DBM and then to COA. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Senator. May, may I request presentation of the menu that we base our release documents on? And a uh, third slide, please. Thanks, please. Okay, uh, these are the menu for the periods covered, 2007, 2009, and this will show to you the general areas where projects could be funded, and I think there are 12 areas here, A, B, C, D, up to L. The next column are the specific programs and projects that should be, that qualify for funding under the PDAF, and uh, third column are the qualified implementing agencies. So if we go by the line here in the presentation of the MINU, if the senators would like it, we'll go one by one. On education, these are purchase of IT equipment. Um, I, I don't think we're okay. dealing with education, so let, let's skip that. Let me just give you a specific example, because under ZREC, it, it uh, refers to farm implementation, uh, farm implements, 
and seeds from seeds and then conduct training and provision for training. Where is that in the menu? First of all, Zurich is not one of the implementing agencies in the list. So, so but I, is it, it the Zurich part of DA or what is Zurich? DA, right? Also, it's DA. So yeah, so our release there was to... So, to because you said it is not an implementing agency, are you saying that they need special permission or doesn't go without saying that because they are under DA, then therefore they are accredited? They, they are not? Uh, what I'm saying, Ms. Madam Senator, is that when we release this sorrow, it is to those agencies listed here. So to DA? In this case, in your particular example, if these are farm implements, it could be with the department. Okay, so I just assume, and please, I'll just take it because I, I saw, uh, sorry, name again, Salako. You were nodding your head. So from DA, it's endorsed directly to you. So, so can you continue? Is it part of livelihood? What happened to your slide? Okay, so the Department of Agriculture here uh, is mentioned in... Uh, Livelihood, not letter C. Well, DA. livelihood, letter C. The implementing agencies are DTI, DA. Yes, I, I know. No. You're, I don't, let's not waste the time okay. of the... I'm already mm -hmm. helping you with the answer. Yeah. Livelihood, DA. So, I ask you specifically, farm implements and seeds. Pasok ba yan dyan? Yes, uh, it's part of uh, the uh, livelihood the IDSS program. So it is. So everything I mentioned earlier is clearly within the the um, project list. Okay, and and Correct, uh, and, um, and I'll now direct my question to Koa. And so because it is part of the official um, project list, then. That on its own doesn't raise any bells for you. Doesn't ring any bells. In other words, because it is consumable, because napakalaki ng amount, wala yon. That, that in itself is not questionable as far as Co is concerned. Uh, we have to validate the documents, not only the the project. So we uh, we determine the beneficiaries and yes, uh, the exactly. supply and all that. So so it's so, the other factors yes, yes, that yes, would yes. ring a bell for you, yes. not just the fact that it's consumable. Oh, yes. I ask this question because this um, issue has come about that consumable should be taken out of the menus. No, I, I'm sure you've heard this kind of. So I, I'm not I'm not making any statement. I'm just raising that that concern, and um, so we put that on record when we when we look when the legislative body looks at this further i'll go more specifically now to the uh, reports given by ztec and NAPCOR. um when we speak of the the uh, check and balances or liquidation not to, to ensure the project is implemented properly when a a MOA is signed. This is signed between the implementing agency, the suppliers, the NGOs, who are the parties involved. I ask this question again because under ZTEC report in COA, it mentioned 42 suppliers, 60 suppliers, and again, it may not be related to this Napolis case, but we use it as an example. So. Does Mr. Salakop, do you look into the existence of those suppliers as well? Because the COA report then said that some of these suppliers denied um, delivering or dealing with the NGO. I'm referring to page 150 of the uh, report, but I'm just using it as an example because this is really for us to understand the process and to understand if the safeguards are in place, which I guess they are not from what happened. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the the suppliers are in direct link with the foundation. None of the not of the Zurek. So you do not look into that, even though we're talking of two hundred seventy two million pesos when you accredit an NGO, which you already said earlier, you just look at the SEC um, registration, the local government permits, then you don't anymore... Um, it, 
The only time we look into that is when they submit their tranche liquidation. The tranche liquidation. Uh, and, and that comes, this, this MOA um, that you mentioned where there's 15, 35, that is over a period of one year or longer? There are projects that covered one year uh, somewhere. So, uh, so let's, let's use a one-year example. Okay. So in other words, if it's divided by four, do I assume that more or less per quarter, so in the first quarter, there would have been one tranche released? So it Mom, it's a case-to-case -case basis. Okay. Now, I'm just trying to understand that how soon do you get feedback and how soon do these liquidation reports get to you such that it would raise the alarm bells that there's something wrong, that, that um, the liquidation is not proper. So that we can be guided accordingly, both COA, DBM, the legislative body, in, in ensuring that this doesn't happen again. What happened is they cannot receive the next tranche if we do not find satisfactory. So in this case, did, did the, were the tranches, did you deliver fully or did it stop somewhere? No, they were fully... Uh, uh, forwarded to the... Well, so then, and again, because this is not purely Annapolis, um, we cannot isolate this, no, as, as DBM was, as uh, COA was saying, but in the, in your, in COA's report on 272 million, where you already noted a lot of um, anomalies, then clearly your safeguards did not work because if the next tranche will not be released until it is fully, the first was fully liquidated, you release this. Um, we also uh, bank on the certification of the certified public accountant that uh, every, everything we, in the expenditures. This, Mr. Chair, we call that certified public accountant because if you they rely on that certification alone, and that vouched for the credibility of the project, then that's that's where one of the big um, that that's where that's where some of this could have been detected. Because yes, we fully agree. The the certified public accountant uh, certifies that the documents are correct and true. Was what answer was given? Why COA was not used? Why was it? Done? Why did you not use COA again, uh, directors? Uh, Sir. As it was a post audit, uh, I believe in 2008, it was a post audit approach. In 2007, we had a pre audit approach, but then. No, no, uh, just for purpose of liquidation of the project, why did you not use the commission on audit? Why, why, why a, a pri private CPA? Uh, sir, I have to check on the documents as to why it was not followed. And by the way, while well, you, were, you were dealing with this, uh, this, um, these uh, legislators in the NGOs, uh, you were releasing in tranches. Yes. And therefore, from time to time, you had contact with the legislators or their representatives and the NGOs. Am I correct? Sir, the working staff of the of the NGO, none of the legislators. Yeah, but who who uh, who who of the none of the legislators? No. The representatives. None. Pari dokumento po upunta sa'yo? Yes, sir. How about you, Mr. Haveliana? You said that you met Mr. Louis several times. Uh, talk to the mic, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman. So, there were, there were constant dealings with Mr. Louis and with the representatives of the, the um, legislators and the legislators. Not directly with me, but we have a uh, point person to him, Mr. Chairman. Who is your point person? Uh, the head of uh, VP Finance. Sino? Sino? The head of VP Finance. Please name names. Uh, uh, Ms. Roda Sarag. Roda. Uh, <laughs> Ms. Roda Mendoza. Roda Mendoza. Babae. Miss? Oh. Yes. Still with the DA? Wala na ho. Okay, Secretary Alcala, please provide us information. You had meetings with uh, Janet Lim Napoles in Discovery Suites. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Bakit sa Discovery ka pupunta? Ba't di mo pinapapunta sa, sa opisina mo? I was invited to go 
there. You were invited to yes. go there. Uh, Anong pinakain sa'yo? Wala ho. Uh, coffee. Coffee lang. Uh, uh, anong pinag-usapan nyo? Sino mga projects? Anong legislators ang pag-usapan? Wala kami pinag-usapan na PDAP. I, I brief her about uh, NAGCOR, Mr. Chairman. You briefed her about NAGCOR? Yes, Mr. Chairman. You did not talk about any NGO or with about the project of any legislator? Wala ho, Mr. Chairman. In the second meeting, because you said you had two meetings. Yes. It's more of a follow-up of the, what you've discussed. You mean you briefed her, then you briefed her again no, in the second more, meeting? it's more, more of the follow-up already. Follow-up of what? Which project? Of, of what you've discussed, Mr. Chairman. Of which project? Well, I briefed him, her about uh, what is now for and uh, what are... Which project? Uh, yung, uh, on processing centers now. Which legislator? <laughs> no, it's a project. Which legislator? Of, it's a project of now for. Are you sure you only met her twice? You're under oath. Yes, sir. Mr. Haviliana, this is very serious. Yes, sir. You are under oath. Yes, sir. And your memory seems to fail you, according to you. Huh? Four years now, you know. Okay. This one, I'm sure. You better make sure you come up with answers next hearing. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Senator Pia, please. Yes. Mr. Chair, on the process of uh, accrediting, accredit, accrediting NGOs, may I ask the two, so the former president and uh, the current president of uh, ZTEC, um, what, what is the accreditation process? Um, well, you've mentioned the SEC registration, but in terms of, and the financial reports, but in terms of knowing the capacity of this NGO in delivering the services, do you check on that? Because they may have three years financial statements, but not in delivering to one million beneficiaries, literally house to house. Is who checks that? Do you? Madam, we rely on the uh, these NGOs are endorsed to us by the uh, lawmakers. So you assume that the lawmaker would know that of the NGO's capability to do the specific project. That is your assumption? Yes, ma'am. Let me ask um, Mr. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting your name. Salako, sorry. Yes. Okay, I mean, and I'm I can't chair. see because of the glare. Sorry about okay. that. Uh, ma'am, in, in the preliminary review, one of our requirements is to, for that proposal, or the, the proponent, the NGO, to show uh, their performance of similar projects in the past three years likewise. So you have two different standards now because at least you're telling me and I would assume as a lawyer that when you look at the memorandum there is a declaration of some kind of capacity of the yes. contracting parties, correct? It would say that uh, this agency is, is involved in this kind of uh, work and then this NGO has the capacity to fulfill this kind of that is what an, a MOA should indicate. So, sa inyo naman po, Mr. Haviliana, there is no such. Is that correct? Ma'am, uh, there are two things that I want to clarify. First, you mentioned about accreditation. Yes. We don't accredit, but we validate the documents that they are submitting Then I think there's us. a problem there, because from my understanding, in my nine years as a senator, the NGO has to be accredited. That's my understanding. Can somebody correct me? I've always assumed that I cannot just uh, pull out an NGO out of the blue. That's what DBM always tells me, Mr. Relampago, Yusek Relampagos. Can you confirm that? Am I wrong? Can I invent an NGO? No, um, Madam Chair. Our guideline says that there, uh, there's a process of engaging NGOs, but uh, DBM does not uh, accredit NGOs. Yeah, well, well, the term I'm familiar with is accredited. It has to be accredited, or as you said, what do you call it? Uh, validated by the implementing agency. Is that correct? Yeah, there is because that. who else would do it? The question is directed at you, Mr. Uh, I'm not very familiar with the process, Madam Chair, on the procurement, but uh, validating with NGOs as far as implementing agencies deal with them. But what I'm citing is just... Uh, guidelines in the GPBB on how to engage 
an NGO by the national government. There are guidelines that are stated, but I'm not so sure if there's a process of accreditation mentioned there. I have to check, Madam Chair. So, going back to Mr. Javiliana, you were saying, please continue. Did you finish your statement? Can you just repeat it for me? Uh, we are not crediting the NGOs. You we said are two things. Eh? Validating. Why. The second one is we are validating the documents that they are submitting to us, the SEC registration, the permits, the work, uh, the financial documents, etc. So, so you do validate in some way because your answer it's already, earlier, it's your answer earlier was that you simply rely on the endorsement of a legislator. Now you're saying that you do validate documents. Yes. Okay, so I, I submit, Mr. Chair, that that's something that the committee needs to look into because I'm, it's not very clear to me that this validation process looks into the actual capability. Probably maybe a declaration. I don't know how far they look into this. So that's maybe something that the committee or we can ask them to give us more details. So I don't use up too much of the time of the, the committee. Um, I just have um, one more question. In these cases that, in the cases we are dealing with where there are legislators who both uh, agencies have said, made endorsements to you, uh, are you, I, so Mr. Havaliana, you are saying that the NGOs only dealt with you after these endorsements. In other words, you never dealt with these NGOs before these endorsements were made by certain legislators. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So prior to that, wala kayong dealing? Wala, ma'am. And then, sa inyo naman po, sa ZTEC? Wala po, ma'am. So in ZREC, ZREC. So ZREC po. In other words, in, in both cases, it was really the introductions of the legislators that, intro that, that brought these NGOs into your areas. Well, that would seem because the, of the two letters, as I mentioned earlier. First letter is to the office of the secretary uh, from the legislator himself or his duly appointed. No, I think in the letter to the office of the secretary, it is the legislator. Then what follows is the letter to ZREC. Um, I, I say those are the two communications that will say, okay, and it identified already the non-governmental organization question is in again for both and for both um implementing agencies did did the NGOs indicate that they had experience and they had been involved in similar livelihood projects and in what way were you did you verify this oh uh, yes ma'am that's part of the validation as we have been mentioning but just uh, documentary yes documentary nothing beyond that None. And, and, you, and you don't believe it's part of your mandate to go beyond documentary um, validation? No, ma'am. We had the lean staff at that time, and we were relying on the, on the endorsements of the legislators. How about you, Mr. Javiliana? Same, ma'am. We... Uh, you did not verify other than, well, first of all, was, was there a, because in their case, there was a documentary um, state, statement to, to the effect that they, this, this NGO were capable and have done similar work. Are you saying may ganun din or you have to check the records? Huwag naman kayo umuo lang if you're not sure, ha? They, they submit to us yung mga these projects nila. Uh, the projects they have been involved in. Yes. That, that's your SOP? Yes, ma'am. So if we look at these documents, we will see that meron silang sinabmit talaga sa inyo. We have, uh, we have a NGO profile in the office of Mahabu And again, you also just relied on documentary evidence? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. That's all, Mr. Chair, for now. Yes, uh, Senator Escudero. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be very brief. Um, First, um, may we ask Secretary Alcala to kindly furnish the committee, not necessarily now, sir, of all the ongoing projects that the DA and all of its attached agencies are implementing 
that the funding is emanating or coming from PIDAF. Dahil at least kung may ongoing pa po, baka naman may mahapul pa tayo. Um, second, again to Secretary Alcala because this is under you. Correct me if I'm wrong. Zirec is a subsidiary of NAPCOR. Yes, sir. In fact, NAPCOR has other subsidiaries and Zirec is only one of them. Is one. I have here Philippine Genetics Incorporated, Zurex, San Carlos Fruit Corporation, Agro Livestock Commercial Development Corporation, Inca Coffee Estate Corporation, Kaunlaran Food Corporation. That is solved now. But aside from Zurex, there are at least two others. Philippine Genetics. Philippine Genetics and Zirek. 